All right, quick recap here before we move on to the, the next issue. Uh, we, we started out looking at what, what are we facing, okay? Again, good to recap where we've been on all this. And if you're bored with, you know, with my recaps, you can turn it at two times or three times speed and work through this. But again, recap, what are the challenges we're facing on all this? Then we look at uh, the interpretation of Scripture. Uh, it, we can get all this right and still subjectively approach the Scriptures wrong and come up with the wrong doctrine. Then we started with point one. We've looked at the inspiration and inerrancy of the Scriptures and what that means. Now, after that, in our apologetics class here, again, very important, we looked at the nature of proof, evidence, argument, uh, and, and what are the actual proofs of inspiration and inerrancy. Because it's one thing to say this is what the Bible actually teaches, okay, about itself, that it's verbal plenary inspiration and all of that. But we're not just here to assert it. We're here to prove that the Bible is uniquely inspired by God, and it's inerrant, hence it's usable, and it's sufficient for our salvation. So, so we, we went through those arguments on what are the traditional proofs of inspiration, um, what is inerrancy? Uh, I covered the concept of Bible difficulties because one of the biggest issues with inerrancy is, but yeah, but what about these errors in the Bible? Well, how do you resolve Bible difficulties? Okay, so, so again, we, we've covered that already. So now we've got God who is the source of these inspired books. We've got criteria okay, are proofs of inspiration and have shown that these books satisfy, okay, to the requisite degree uh, of uh, our burden of, of persuasion that, yes, we should believe these books are inspired. Other books like the Quran, the Book of Mormon, do, just don't rise to that level, okay? But now we get to the next step. There are lots and lots of books out there in the world religions, the cults, that claim to be from God. So the huge, huge issue is how now do we collect the right books okay, to be the source of our theology, of our belief system? And how, so how, what's our sorting task here of all the claims of all the books that claim to be from God and inspired? So that's the task of canonicity. Okay, which is closely related to the concept of inspiration because of this. It's actually relatively simple to understand criteria for canonicity, which is one of the proofs for inspiration. If, you sat, if a book satisfies all the proofs for inspiration or the criteria for inspiration, then it qualifies, I mean, generically, there's some, you know, uh, there, there's some qualifications, but ultimately it should be part of the canon if in fact the book is inspired by God. So the, the proofs of inspiration are going to be the criteria we use to filter book selection of what's going to be in the, those books that measured up for the collection. The very word canon itself originally meant, uh, back in the ancient Near East, uh, a reed or a measuring stick. So the idea of the canon is, is the ruler, the reed, the measuring stick, those books that measured up and satisfied the criteria for inspiration. And those are the books that we bring into the, uh, again, into our collection of our 66 books Protestant canon. Again, we reject the, the deuterocanonical books of Roman Catholicism. Uh, we reject all the other claims of, you know, Islam, the Book of Mormon, uh, other, other books by the other groups out there. So, so what we're working towards now in this section, both in your Geisler and Nick's text and in the, uh, Again, in uh, uh, Dr. Price's lectures on canonicity here, our good friend Dr. Price, we uh, giving you a, a lot of good information on the canonicity of Scripture, is that, uh, again, now you will have a good reason to believe, and it's very important here, as I mentioned in our idea of the nature of proof and knowledge and epistemology in uh, one of the previous modules, is that we've got good and sufficient reasons now, right, to say that, we can recognize inspired books, and these are the books we should be using to build doctrine. That's what canonicity is all about. So I'll see you in the next module.